In this video, we want to learn how to use PyTorch inbuilt transforms uh, on images. So first, if you're unfamiliar with data augmentation or wonder why you should use it, essentially more data is always better when we train neural nets. And if we can get more for free by doing some transformations to our images, it's almost always a good thing. Uh, in this case, uh, we're loading our data using a custom data set, which I've cho showed how to do in a previous video. Uh, but uh, that's not really the focus in this video. Uh, any way you manage to load the data is fine. Uh, in this case, the data that we're working with is two pictures of cats. And uh, we want to apply some transformations to those and we want to see how they look like after we've transformed the transformations. And perhaps most importantly, we want to see how do we actually apply the transformations. So let's see, what we do first is we can actually just for image comma label in data set, we can do print image dot shape. Yeah, so we get two images which are colored, so three channels RGB and 224 by 224 size. The first thing I want to show you how to do is uh, we're going to use transforms dot compose. Uh, or actually, let's go back. So here you can see we do one single transformation, which is we convert the, in this case, NumPy array to a tensor. But let's say we want to do more transformations than this. Oh, what happened here? Okay. Uh, so transforms.compose is what we're going to use to combine several different transformations. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. First, what we want to do is we, we're just going to use transforms.compose and we're going to do transforms dot to pill image. Uh, that's the first thing we're going to do because all the transformations work uh, on this, I guess, format when we do it to pill image. So that's usually what we do first. Then there are a bunch of this different uh, transformations you can apply to uh, to images. We're, we're going to go through some of them. Uh, but the, really, there are many configurations of them, and you might want to read the documentation for those specifics. But let's say we we want to do transforms dot uh, random horizontal flip, and we can input a probability here with which is default 0 0.5, and then in the end we can do transforms dot to tensor. So for example. The name is pretty self-explanatory, but what it does is it flips the image horizontally. So what we can do is we can do to be able to visualize this. We can do uh, save. We can use torchvision.utils save image that I've imported here. So save image uh, image with the name image plus string of image num which we're going to define here. And then we're going to do plus PNG format. And then we're just going to do image num plus equals one. And let's say we do that for, we do that 10 times. So in total, we will have 20 images and we just run that. Now, if we go back to our folder here, we have 20 images. We can see that yeah, so this one is flipped horizontally, I believe. Um, that one, yeah. So some of them are flipped horizontally. And, <clears throat> and that's kind of a, like a simple transformation to do. Uh, one thing we could do as well is we could do uh, transforms.color jitter um, with brightness 0 0.5. So what this does is apply some random uh, brightness like... Uh, change to the to the image there are more things you can input here as well um, but yeah really I just want to go through some of the most common ones and you can choose for your specific case which one you think is best um, another one we can do is transform dot resize so we first resize the image to let's say 256 by 2 256 and then we do some random crop of that image um, we do the crop 224, 224. Then let's say we want to apply, we could also apply rotation to the image, right? A rotated 
image of a cat is still a cat. So we can do transforms dot uh, random rotation and we input degrees with 45, for example. Um, one more thing, we could do transforms dot random vertical flip. But perhaps, you know, uh, it's more common to see, it, it's quite uncommon to see vertically flipped uh, images of cats. So for, maybe this is a low probability of 0 0.05. Um, and uh, yeah, so those are some examples what we can do. Um, actually, we can add some more. We can do transforms dot random gray scale with a probability of let's say 20%. So this will convert the image to grayscale with a 20% probability. Another thing that is quite important to do, which improves the training uh, quite a bit, is a transforms dot normalize, which you do after you have uh, to tensor. And for this, you input a mean and a standard deviation. And essentially what you want to do here is, so for each channel, in this case, we have three channels, you want to find the mean for that speci a specific channel across all training examples and for all of the over all of the pixel values you would find that mean value and you would also find the standard deviation uh, for all training examples across all pixel values and you would find those for each channel so there would be three values in this case and then you would input them uh, like this and like this. Now, of course, I don't know the mean value and the standard deviation for those two, two images that I have in this case, but you find those values first, and then you do that. And what it does, it takes uh, each value for that channel, and then it subtracts it with the mean that you inputted, and then it divides by the standard deviation. So in this case, uh, this would actually not do anything, right? Since um, this would just subtract zero and divide by one. Perhaps we can write uh, note this does nothing. Yeah, but in practice you would find those values first and then you would uh, use them. I just want to add a comment here about transforms.compose that what it does is it applies all the transformations that we wrote inside to uh, the image that we send in and it also does it in the order that we wrote it. Uh, so it performs tuple image before, resize, and random crop uh, after, resize, etc. Uh, and since we have a lot of random uh, transformations in the transform.compose, each time uh, we send in an image, we will get another image as output. So, uh, yeah, now we have done a lot of transforms on our images. Let's run this. Uh, let's see. Yes, we need a comma here, I think. And yeah, another comma here. Yeah, this should be a small s. Yeah, okay. So now we've run it and let's see. So here we got a rotation and it's also grayscale. Grayscale again. Uh, yeah, so essentially you can see that the images still all look like cats, except there are variants of that image. And this is a bit weird, uh, but yeah, still a cat. So yeah, that's an example of how you would use it. Now, this is just, we just do the images, but really what you would do when training is you would just do uh, a training loader here uh, using the data loader. Uh, and then you would train the network. Yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment below. Uh, hopefully this was useful and uh, thank you so much for watching the video.